Welcome to From the Mind of Christine McConnell. So today's episode is something I can't believe I'm doing on camera, which is a makeup tutorial. I'm somebody who wears makeup every single day of my life. I never leave the house without it. So the idea of being on camera without all of the makeup that I typically wear is a little unnerving. I started wearing makeup as a teenager just to cover up terrible acne that I had. And even as I got older and the acne went away, I just continued wearing it as almost like an armor. So it's a little uncomfortable for me, but I figure this is a how-to series and I've seen people ask for this. So I figure I can set most of my vanity aside for a single episode and show you what I've learned. Now, I would keep in mind that makeup is an incredibly subjective art form. So what seems like a ton to one person might seem like hardly any to somebody else. So with that in mind, I hope there's something featured here that you can personally utilize. And if not, I don't know, it's just gonna be like a fun conversational episode. So let's begin. Okay, so I should get into what was the catalyst for this entire episode. And that was the last episode I just finished, which is a Patreon exclusive. And I feature how to transfer modern day cosmetics into really pretty old antique containers. And so this is really my first time getting to actually use everything. So I've got my primer in a really pretty antique little compact and everything else just about, there's with the exception of just a few things, now has been moved over to a really fun, beautiful little thing because for me, makeup is very ritualistic and I know some people want to sort of like rush through it as quickly as possible. And I'm just somebody that I always take my time with it and spend probably kind of a ridiculous amount of time doing it, but it's, I don't know, it's soothing and calming for me. So I know everyone's a little bit different with the order that they do their makeup. And for me, I always do my eye makeup first, just because as I do it, I always tend to make a little bit of a mess. So I find that I end up with a more like sort of seamless finished look if I do that first, um, even if I look a little crazy at the midway point. I do add concealer or a light foundation to the lids of my eyes. And I transferred all of my makeup into all of my foundation and concealers into these really beautiful um, antique Dior, I think it's called an Amphora bottle. And so this is gonna be my first time actually getting to use it. And the way the lid works is it kind of is really easy to apply just a little bit. And went a little bit crazy on that one. Might as well just blend that in. I just recently transferred all of my very favorite eyeshadows into this antique cigarette case. And I like sculpted a cute little owl and put it on there. So what is inside is my very favorite brand of eyeshadow, which is Melt. And I even got like a couple MAC shades in there as well. So my very first step is to kind of do like a median shade right in the socket. And something that I do that's a little bit different is I always drop the eyeshadow down the socket line just a little bit and I go back and clean that up later and then that kind of gives me like a good angle for like defining the shape that I'm gonna go with. So something that I use only for special occasions is pink tissues. I They don't even make these anymore. You have to find them on eBay and that's pretty much the only place I've ever seen them and I've like scoured the internet looking for them, but they're so beautiful. I don't understand why this is not something that they continued making. It just makes everything a little bit pretty and it's nice to like either blot your face with or just like brush off the excess from your brush. So 
So now that I've got it to this stage, I'm going to cut a line underneath using a makeup remover wipe. Now I think I'm ready to apply a liner. I start with a black on the outer line and then I transition to a deep brown the closer I get to the inner corner. I generally like my eyes to look as soft as possible. So breaking up the color and the contrast kind of helps me achieve that. So once I get it to this stage, I'm going to break up the transition here with like a slightly pink shade. And I feel like that adds just a little bit of life to your eye. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is fill in my eyebrows a little bit. And one thing I really try to be careful with with the eyebrows is not doing anything so you don't see any really severe lines. So I'm always trying to like break them up and diffuse them if I can. And I get a little bit close to the center, but really never too much. I really like that 1950s kind of pretty sort of filled in structured eyebrow. And so that's generally the model that I usually use when I'm doing them. The way that I learned to do my eyebrows was when I started doing photography in my early 20s, I found that pictures where the eyebrows were pretty filled in and shaped tend to look the best. And so I've really learned a lot of makeup from taking pictures of myself and then looking at them later and determining like what makes you look better overall. So now that I've gotten into this stage, I feel like taking a little bit of a break and talking about some of the people that have really influenced me and that I absolutely love watching here on YouTube. My number one favorite YouTuber is Lisa Eldridge. She is so just like soothing and calming to listen to speak. And she's so incredibly knowledgeable. She does makeup for so many of like the, the red carpet looks that you see and all of the people on those magazine covers. She does a ton of them. So she's got a ton of incredible knowledge to contribute. And I don't know, I just anytime a video of hers pops up, I just cannot watch it fast enough. And then on the flip side of that, um, someone who does more sort of dramatic makeup is Juno Birch. I just, I absolutely love her. She does such like surreal, incredibly beautiful makeup that if you want to treat yourself to some fun, go watch some of her videos because they're incredible. Other people that have influenced me, I really love Chloe Morello um, and Hindash. Those are two um, YouTubers that I just absolutely love what they do and how they do it. So now with that being said, I think I'm getting ready to do lashes. So I am such a huge fan of individual lashes. I've been using them for years and years. I, I just, the difference they make are so dramatic, but at the same time, they're not they're never really too artificial looking, which sometimes my issue with strip lashes is when someone's looking directly at you, it looks super, super beautiful. And then when you're looking down, depending on if you don't have a ton of eyeshadow on, you can tend to see that it's a strip of lashes. So that's, that's pretty much why this is always my go-to. So the way that I do this, I tend to have a magnified mirror right in front of my face, so I'm not ever holding a mirror. 
So we're gonna see how this works out. Take a little bit of duo glue. I just use clear, it comes out white at first and then dries. And put a little bead on my hand. This all just kind of varies a little bit. And pluck those out. So once I've got my eyelashes where I think I want them, I always take two mirrors and I look all around to make sure that they look like even and natural from every angle because obviously when you're out and about and talking to people, you want to make sure you don't look kind of funny from one angle where there's maybe like a hole of the lashes or something like that. And these look good to me. So now I'm ready to get on to base and concealer. I am a huge fan of Maybelline Fit because it really doesn't cost a lot and it you can use it a lot. So I wear makeup not just on my face but on like my chest and arms and anything that's really exposed to the sun because I always want to have sunscreen on there and I'm, I'm kind of like a freckly person which some people embrace. I'm really not too much of a fan of on myself. So I always mix a little bit of this foundation with the sunscreen that I wear every day and put it everywhere. And it just tends to make me look a little more human. Another nice thing about this is a little goes a long way. So Melt Cosmetics came out with a line of brushes that I am so in love with and I don't know if they continued making them or if it was just a limited run, but they are amazing, especially for blending in your face. I just want to make sure you work up into your hairline and get your ears. I think that's about all I need. Like I said, I don't tend to wear a, a very thick layer of the base, but when it comes to concealer, I do go a little bananas. One of the places that I tend to wear a lot of concealer is right here in the corners of my eyes and then right here in the little crevice of my nose. So now when I get it to this stage, I put a little bit, like a dollop of concealer on the back of my hand. Take a little concealer brush and you kind of just want to look at your face and see if there's anything you want to fix or correct. And I have like a broken capillary here. You always have to conceal. Okay, so now my next step is to add a cream rouge. And my very, very favorite one, which I just transferred over to this really pretty container, is by Kosas, and the color is called Velvet Melon. And it has like a really pretty orangey shade that I use, so I use two blushes. I use a cream rouge when I'm at this stage, and then I'll be using a powder at the very end just to add like a pop of a pink. couple spots that I add rouge to are right here at my temples. And 
And I just find that adds like a little bit of life to your face. This is how I highlight my face. So now that I've got that done and before I powder, I'm going to do something my mom sort of taught me to do and I've just always done is you take a Kleenex at this stage and just kind of blot your whole face. And this way, you don't end up with anything that looks too excessive. And now is a good time to go back and if there's anything else that needs to be just touched up or concealed, you can do it. All right, and now it's time for a little bit of powder. got it to the stage. I'm going to go back in with my eyeshadows and kind of shade around the bottom of my eye. I always use kind of a caramel color just right under the bottom lash line. Okay, so now for mascara. This is the one thing that I haven't figured out how to transfer um, and also be sort of like sanitary <laughs> into an antique container. But the one that I love is Bad Gal Bang by Benefit. And I always buy the smallest one because, I don't know, they dry out, all the mascaras dry out. And so if you use a giant tube, you end up, I feel like you end up wasting a bunch. So I always like a smaller, smaller little tube. I'll apply just a tiny bit to the bottoms and then I'll actually end up like brushing off a lot of it. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a powder blush and I like Dandelion by Benefit. Just try to hit right there, not too much. I find doing a combination of an orange based cream rouge at the base and then going over with like a really soft pink kind of gives almost like a 3D peach effect to the cheek. Okay, so now for lipsticks. I, one of the coolest things that I did in that last video where I transferred everything over was I moved some of my very favorite shades of lipstick into antique cases. And they're so beautiful. I actually like hand painted a bunch on here. But it's a really fun way to transfer your lipstick over and it looks so good. So one of my go-to shades that I've been wearing for years is Old Rose by Melt, and I love it so much. But today I am going to use a Lisa Eldridge lip color, and this is Velvet Fawn. I like it because it has a bit of like an, it's still like a dead old lady color, which is sort of just what I live for. Um, but it has kind of like a little bit of an oranginess to it. Thank you. 
think I'm ready. Just about my last step. So in my, like the video that I keep referencing where I've transferred everything over to vintage containers, one of the things that I did that was such a fun idea was transferring a setting spray into an antique perfume atomizer. And it's so fun because I mean, when else are you gonna use one of these pretty little things? And it's really, all you, have, all you had to do was switch over the bulb to a brand new one and it works amazingly well. Okay, so the very last step I'm going to cover is perfume. In my previous video, I transferred one of my absolute favorite fragrances, which is Dita Von Teese's um, Scandalwood by Heretic. And I turned it into a solid perfume that I put in this beautiful little compact. And you just open it up, and you rub a little bit, and you can apply this to your wrists, pretty much just your pulse points. And then if that isn't for you, I did also transfer it over into this really super fun antique perfume egg and just push the button. And then there's these little violins. You can apply it that way. And I just, I mean, I love antique perfume containers. I pretty much like anything antique. So this was just kind of a really fun way to make those things actually usable. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I, it was not nearly as scary as I thought it was gonna be. I typically spend about 40 to 45 minutes doing my makeup on an average day. And, which I know sounds like a crazy amount to most people, but I personally have always really enjoyed the ritual of it and it's very calming for me. But today I spent probably four or five hours doing it, which is unusual to do. So again, I think this is probably going to be the only makeup episode I do, but I have a bunch of fun new projects in the works, so stay tuned for that. If you would like to support this series, follow the link below to Patreon, and I have a ton of episodes on there of all sorts of fun little crafts and projects that I do, ranging from woodworking, handmade gifts, conflict resolution, patterns to the clothes that I make, and even home decorating. Check that out if you like, and in the meantime, take care of yourselves, and I will see you very soon. Oh my gosh, he's so sweet. Hello.